Today is Thursday, October 10th, 2019. About quarter to five right now. That's 4.45 p.m. Outside temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 21 degrees Celsius. And today I'm going to be taking you on a walk of the Lower East Side. So crowded subway station here. I'm trying to get to the staircase. This is rush hour after all. This is the Broadway and Lafayette Street station underneath Houston Street. This station is served by the B, D, F, M and number 6 trains. I'm getting off at Lafayette Street and South uh, Houston Street Southwest corner. And here I am at street level at Lafayette Street and Houston Street. That way is Broadway, that's going west. I want to go east, I'm going this way. <laughs> this is the neighborhood of Soho here. I'm looking straight at the Puck building. I won't be doing a video of Soho today, but you can check out my other narrated video. I have it up on YouTube, I'll leave a link to it with a card if you'd like to watch it today's video is going to be the lower east side which i'm not at at right now for the lower east side i need to go past bowery which is about three blocks away but i'll give you a tour of houston street before i get there i always like to try to show the borders whenever possible so a little bit of um, history about the Lower East Side as well as its boundaries. It's bounded by Bowery to the west, like I said, Houston Street, which is this street to the north the FDR Drive to the east and Canal Street to the south. Historically, the Lower East Side included the area up to 14th Street and includes today's East Village, which is right across the street. That's the East Village on the other side of Houston Street. But it's also bordered by Chinatown to the south and Nolita, which is an acronym for North of Little Italy to the West. So before um, the Europeans came to New York City, this area was settled by the Lenape Native American Indians. Their main track was around Broadway, which is um, where I got out of the train station. I was, and I was at a and I was about to walk to there until I turned around. But they had one big encampment in the Lower East Side area near Corlear's Hook. But then the Europeans came and this became a settlement of New Amsterdam for the Dutch. Most of the Dutch settled um, below what is today Fulton Street, but there were some smaller plantations and farms in the north part along here. And I'll tell you a little bit more about um, that when I get past the Bowery.
so I've approached Bowery and this street is significant because it uh, retains its old name by the way this is the entrance to the old Bowery subway station at least the abandoned part of it you can tell by the globe here but Bowery is actually Dutch for farm it comes from the Dutch word Bowerji I think I'm saying that correctly but all along the other side of the street here there were tons and tons of farms that's why it was called the Bowery and there's many um, African Americans who live here free and half free Africans who worked on the plantations and um, farms There was a wealthy landowner by the name of James Delancey. He had a farm east of the Bowery and his legacy le um, continues on by the name of Delancey Street and Orchard Street. Orchard Street was, uh, I presume, his orchard. So here's the Whole Foods Market. Across the street is First Street Gardens. Lovely park with a lot of amazing cherry blossoms. You can go and check that out whenever it's the season. But yeah, that's the history the early history of the Lower East Side. But on to recent history. In the 1840s, there were large numbers of Germans who moved into the area. Many of the immigrants. Oh, hard to get around people here. There's a lot of activity here with this Whole Foods and delivery workers. But, um, this area became known as Little Germany or Klein Deutschland. And in fact, after the Germans settled here, there were large immigrants from all around the world who settled here, mainly from Europe Italians, Eastern European Jews, Polish, Romanians, Greeks, Russians, Slovaks, Ukrainians. Each of them had their own separate enclave. And um, by 1920, the Jewish group had a very, very large enclave with around 400,000 people. This was around Orchard Street and Grand Street area. And there was a Yiddish theater district on 2nd Avenue between Houston Street and 14th Street. You know what, I said that was uh, First Street Gardens back there, but this is actually it at Christie Street. This is Sarah D. Roosevelt Park. This park extends all the way to Canal Street. It's a continuous uh, park that's broken up by the cross streets at times, so it provides a lot of um, facilities for the community, basketball courts, um, gardening um, sections, there's also open lawns and ball fields there. Very nice addition to the park. But on to our history of the Lower East Side. So a lot of these immigrants settled here. This became uh, well known as one of the earliest slums in New York City and the living conditions became very tight around here they are crammed into many of these uh, tenements sometimes sharing like three families in a single tenement a, a single apartment uh, so it was very uh, very harsh living for many of these families who decided to take the plunge into here and there were laws enacted in order to protect, protect people from being crammed in too close. 
one of these laws required that these tenements keep an open space between them so they had an open window because some of these developers were building rooms with no windows in it and cramming as many people as they can but this led to dumbbell apartments because um, they had open shafts but they didn't lead, um, lead to any airflow they just had an open window in the middle of a shaftway and not to any of the outside air so many of these people used the shaftway to dump garbage and they weren't really meant to be cleaned or have anything dumped into them so that was one of the flaws of that law over time uh, things were made to remedy this but it came too late in order to fix everything but you still see many of these old law tenement buildings around in the lower east side This is Allen Street, it becomes First Avenue on the other side. I believe there's a movie, I forget which one, or maybe a TV show that joked about how someone was lost because he was on First and First. But yeah, that's where it is, First Avenue and First Street. $0.99 cents pizza. You can get a lot of uh, 99 cents pizza and dollar pizza in Manhattan. I wouldn't recommend eating it all the time though. Here's Russ and Daughters. Very old staple in the neighborhood, celebrating 105 years. Jewish Bakery. By far one of the most well-known businesses in this area is up ahead on the corner here with Ludlow Street. This is Katz's Delicatessen. You can get a monster pastrami sandwich in there. It's infamous for its many long lines. This is one of the staples of the Jewish community who set up a business here. There you can see all the uh, the history here they put pictures up looks like it was founded in 1897 so imagine that a lot of history no So, by the turn of the um, World War I, this area had a dramatic decline in the German population due to anti-German sentiment and the General Slocum disaster. Do you get food in Javi every morning? No. no I the Lower East Side became a really racially integrated neighborhood with many African Americans and Puerto Ricans and many of the Spanish as well. This area was very uh, known for crime and a lot of other things in this area. A lot of drugs and abandoned houses. In the 1960s, the area north of here, the East Village, split from the Lower East Side. Many of the newer residents moved into there. A lot of artists and musicians. Um, real estate brokers and newcomers popularized the East Village name and it became a de facto uh, name probably in the 1980s. But by the 1980s, the Lower East Side finally became stabilized. The uh, crime didn't get any worse and many other people started moving in here. But um, Throughout the 
early 90s into the late 2000s like now gentrification has begun to spread to the lower east side something that the uh, city has tried to protect with many of the historic districts in the area you can see many of the newer buildings going up here many restaurants that's threatening the um, the demographics of the neighborhood what I'll do is I'll walk to Clinton Street make my way south towards Rivington and then I'll go um, I'll head west on Rivington until maybe Allen Street and then I'll turn south. I want to give a good mix of the Lower East Side in this walk, not just Houston Street. These crosswalks are very dangerous from Houston Street. There's many um, car drivers who like to make quick turns so you have to be very careful. Okay, I'm going to make a ride on Clinton Street. I think I'll walk on Clinton Street until the Williamsburg Bridge and then walk on Delancey. I like Clinton Street. Clinton Street has a lot of restaurants and a lot of charm here. It's kind of different than the other parts of the Lower East Side. You can also see there's a um, a place of worship across the street Jewish place of worship this is congregation chasm sofer I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly here's Rizzo's pizza originally this was on this was uh, on Steinway Street in Astoria, it still is, but this is their second location in the Lower East Side. I smell the pizza all the way from here, wow. Here's Boba Guys, very great milk tea and bubble tea place. Now I'm at the corner of Stanton Street. Here's a bar called the Donnie Brook. You can get happy hour every day from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Two dollars off any drink. If you want to save money on drinks, come during happy hour. I notice a lot of the bicycles here have New York chains, New York kryptonites, because the bike thieves here are merciless. If you use an inferior lock, they'll cut through it like so quickly. There's a hair studio, Izzy's queen of cheesesteaks. This is a retail condo for sale. You can see all the newly designed windows and rooms.
Here we have Rosen Pizza. You have to be careful of these open cellar, cellar doors because if you're not looking down, you can easily walk into them. This is a awesome place, Takira Adana. Thai-licious. Love the names of some of these restaurants. They're very creative. Black and Crescent. This street here is a perfect example of why the Lower East Side is gentrifying. Here's a pawn shop. I'm only one block away from the Williamsburg Bridge. I don't know what name of the business, uh, the name of this business, K91. Hmm, I think it's a tattoo parlor. There's also a cake place here. Okay, Pigeon. You didn't have to fly in front of me and like three other people. But hey. You good, Angie? Okay, I've approached Delancey Street. I'm going to walk on Delancey Street uh, westward. Very busy street here on Delancey Street. walk on Delancey Street to Allen Street and then make my way south. I think that will give a good mix of the Lower East Side. New developments all on the Lower East Side. Essex office, the offices at Essex Crossing, and here's another building going up. I don't see any cars yet. All right, we can go. I know, I know. I'm rushing home to see them now. I know that's right. It's right. So you can purchase the same car that has to be A lot of activity around here. People selling their wares right on the street here. There's also the subway station right here. The Delancey Street and Essex Street station. Love that French Bulldog there. Looks very happy. Here's Norfolk Street. I'm gonna hurry up before the car gets here. Across the street is the Essex Market, or the new Essex Market, I should say. The old Essex Market is on this corner to the right. I'm going to show you what it's turned into now, if anything. Essex Street Market. But this is a very historical building. It housed many businesses inside, a lot of, um, Old school fruit, uh, fruit and vegetable vendors, uh, restaurants are in there. 
I don't think it's uh, we're allowed to go in anymore, but it'll be very interesting. Interesting if um, I can. Yeah, it's completely locked up and closed up. Sad to see this area closed up like this, but the new ones across the street now. I did try to record inside during its final days, but unfortunately, um, some people didn't take too kindly to me recording in there, so I decided to skip it entirely. But it's a very interesting place. I wish I could have captured it on video for you all. But here's the new one, completely different from the old one across the street. It's all modern now. Hey, I'm walking here. Movie reference. Always got to be careful of cars. Never know what they're going to do here. There's a old facade, it says K-A-R-C. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a German influence. I know there's one area, there's a uh, German library, but that's more towards the um, East Village. I wonder what we can see here. Okay, I think I'm gonna go. Here's Diner on Ludlow. Look at this, Joe's Fabric Warehouse. This looks ancient. The window's all old and it has look, doesn't look like it's been clean in a while. Here's the Lower East Side Tenement Museum. Great museum, it has a lot of things that are preserved from the immigrant New York City. You can go and check it out. But this entire building, each floor and each apartment tells a different story. If you want to see the raw New York from its beginnings, I highly recommend you to check them out. Looks like there's a store that's just opening right now. The dinner time crowd. Sushi restaurant. Here you can see a lot of the old tenements and apartments.
I wonder what's up with this huge crowd across the street. Must be some kind of event going on. Or film production because I see a bunch of movie trucks across the street. There's Williamsburg Pizza, very famous for their specialty slices. Yeah, I wonder what they're filming here, but they definitely got a lot of movie equipment in there and across the street. like to know what they're filming but this flyer is all torn up here yeah I'm sorry I wish I could tell you what's being filmed over here so you can reflect on it later but I don't think I'll be able to find anything. Anyway, I'm going to make a right onto Grand Street. Now I'm approaching the border of the... Oh, we have uh, Starling. Don't know what Starling is, but that's what's being recorded right now. This can sort of be the border of the Lower East Side as well. We're approaching Chinatown or in Chinatown, depending on how you define it and where you see its borders. But the Lower East Side was also occupied by many Chinese immigrants as well. Once I get to once I get to Christie Street, I think I'll end this video, which is only in another block. If you'd like to see a narrated walk of Chinatown, I've done one. Uh, in my history, you can go check that video out. There's a Thai restaurant, Nori Thai Bazaar. There's Forziv Street. And here's Sarah D. Roosevelt Park. As I was saying before, this goes all the way down to Canal Street. So there's still quite a bit left to go. So this park is not so nice. Anyway, this is the end of this video everyone. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video down below and comment on what was your favorite part. I'll catch you all next time. See you later.